following video demonstrates how to use uh, Enforce to import a point cloud and then uh, extract survey information from it um, and then obviously label up the, the scene that we have so that we can uh, create a, a drawing and uh, hopefully create information pertinent to the crash scene. So I'm going to start by creating a model. I'm just going to start by creating a single model called crash scene and just press OK. OK, so when Enforce is dealing with model data as opposed to generic CAD data, we are essentially dealing with XYZ data. So we've got a point that's been picked up on site. It could be a total station or it could be a GNSS and it's got a code and that code tells Enforce what to do. So the code table understands the code. It's all been set up prior to this so that Enforce draws information uh, pertinent to what you want to see. So we're going to start by going into the model and I'm going to go straight into the 3D viewer. Okay, so with Enforce, you have the 3D view, the 2D view, and the spreadsheet view. The spreadsheet view shows your raw data as in XYZ code and so on and so forth. The 2D view, which has this kind of prism in the corner, shows your data as it, as it would look in a drawing. And the 3D data, looks at the you know the full data set in 3d so i'm going to minimize that maximize that i'm going to change my background color and have it in uh, sort of a, a sort of a sky blue and i'm now going to import the point cloud so to do that i go to point cloud io and select convert and press add okay so here's one i've made earlier it's a cut down data set just for a little test site Point clouds generally come in two file formats. You have a LAS file or an E57. A LAS file is a monolithic block of data and an E57 can be a monolithic block of data or it can be lots of individual scans. Um, it makes no difference to Enforce ultimately. Um, so I'm just going to press OK. OK, so I'm going to fast forward the importing of the data. And there we go. We've imported half a billion points in just over, or rather just under three minutes. So to begin with, we have our display mode over here on the left, uh, just underneath the point count. At the moment it's set to normal. So normal means RGB, as in red, green, blue. You can also switch that to intensity. And you can also then from uh, having selected intensity, if you would prefer, instead of having red, green, blue, you can have blue, green, red, or go straight for grayscale. Okay. Now, if it's a grayscale video, or uh, so if it's a grayscale scan, obviously, maybe it was done at night. Um, so the intensities might obviously not give you a very clear image of what's going on. So in that situation, what we do, we go to point cloud tools and select the intensity picker option. And what that does is that lets us recolor the point cloud um, based on the current intensity that's being picked. So what we're essentially doing is we're changing the, the shading characteristics. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hover over an area it gives me a, a better idea of what's going on. That'll do. Okay. So that would be a way of helping to, you know, make the data more uh, usable if all we had was intensity channels to work with, but we don't. So I'm going to put it back on normal. So if I zoom out, uh, first thing I do then is uh, show you. So we have on the end of the Point Cloud Tools tab, you can visualize the clipping box. So if I see Edit Box, okay, that's the extent of the data that came in. And if you enable the clipping option, you can then hover over a face, and the arrow obviously uh, dictates which one you're pointing at. And if you point at the dot, that's obviously controlling the face. If I just drag that down, it will then clip the data as needed. Okay, and if I hit reset, that goes back to its original settings. I can also, instead of doing edit box, do set rectangle, when it kind of looks at it in 2D view, and I can say, well, actually, all I want to do is just work with that data like that, and that trims it down uh, nice and neatly in one go. Obviously, you can still click edit box, and, and tweak whatever you whatever you need to. So the purpose of this exercise is to start trying to extract uh, vector information as if it had been surveyed with a total station or GNSS.
So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the digitized tab and I'm going to put in my first code that I'm going to extract. Okay, so let's have a look around and let's say um, round the back over here is a fence, I believe. There we go at the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my code and I'm going to put in fence. Okay, now then by hitting select points, I'm now sort of entering the digitized mode. And if I press add, it starts, no, sorry, Enforce adds it to a kind of palette. I can then say, well, uh, I've also got some greenery in there as well. So let's put verge in there and press add. There we go. And I've obviously got a curb in here. So let's put that in as well. KB, press add. All right. And I can then obviously switch between the code I'm going to use either by clicking on it or by pressing spacebar. So I'm going to do a fence. Now it's always good practice if you're starting a new feature just to press N and that will enable this tick box over here. It's obviously ticked it automatically for me because it's the first point, but it's just a good habit to get into. As soon as you start a new object, new feature, just press N and that will automatically enable the tick box there or you just click it manually with a mouse. We also need to confirm how we're going to or rather what we're going to lock to. Okay, so when you're picking point cloud data, it's possible that there could be a speck of data between us or I could accidentally um, pick something on this lamppost rather than the, um, the the verge behind perhaps. So you have to be careful and make sure that your pick mode is set appropriately. So nearest obviously is going to move the or any detail I click is going to lock to the closest point to the camera. I want to, in this case, select farthest because then I know I'm getting the ground level. If I go to tools and hit set center, um, it pops this command, it pops the tool uh, above digitize points because that's now the active tool. And what I'm gonna just do is I'm gonna say zoom on click and set that to say about 10 meters and then right click and that tool cancel. The reason for doing that is now when I click, it will zoom in for me. Now maybe 10 was too little, so let's set that to five. So if I zoom out, do control click, there you go, it zooms straight in. So back to digitize <clears throat> and for new. That's the first point of my fence. Okay. And now I just need to pick the next point for my fence. So this fence looks fairly straightish. So I'm just going to spin the camera around, making sure I've got furthest enabled. Okay, so we, here we can see the fence is actually um, uh, changing direction. And we do have some trees and things in the way, so I'm just gonna make life easy for myself and just quickly go to tools, edit box, and I'm just gonna drop that right down to get rid of the trees and anything else in the way. So let's put a point down in there, put a point down there. Okay, now there's a gap in the fence there, so I'm going to put a point there, put N for new, start again here. So that I can uh, see what I've been doing, I'm going to tick always visible, and then you can see it puts that brown line in there. If I want to, I can make it thicker under the home tab. You've got the default line thickness set to two, if I set it to five, it will fatten it up. And let's finish it up there. Okay, so if I right click, that cancels that particular tool and stops the actual digitizing process. So we're also always visible on, you see it like that. Always visible off, you see it like that. If I turn the point cloud off, you see it like that. Okay, so I've uh, done, the, done the fence. Let's do some verge. On the edge of the grass, basically. So back to digitize, select points. Verge is already in there, so I'm just going to pick it. I'm going to end for new just to be sure. And start the verge. So I'll go from there to there to there. And control click just to zoom it in. And let's say the verge finishes about there. Okay, end for new. That's one verge. Okay, so I've 
digitized those uh, there. I'll just drop the line thickness down a little bit. <coughs> okay, so I haven't actually uh, imported the crash scene yet, so let's do that. So what's happened? Mr. Potato's friend has been hit by a car as he was crossing the road just outside the bus stop. And we obviously need to complete our survey and label up the missing, or rather label up the body parts. So I'll continue carrying on my digitizing process. So select this time and I'm going to go for KB to pick up the road edge. And so control click. Start somewhere down here. Okay, so I'm going to put a point there and a point there because I'll, I can signify the drop curve if I need to later on. And we're starting to go around the corner. So control click. So this has obviously got a slight curve on it. So I'm going to hit T for tangent. So I'm going to start a tangential curve. So you've got from there. And now these points will be curve fitted as I click them. And you can see it's got curve ticked. So it knows after starting a tangential curve to keep curving. That's probably far enough. So I can just right click cancel that. Right, so we've got the curve now, we've got the verge, uh, we've got a railings in here though, so we'll go back and we'll pick up the railings. So I haven't used railings yet, so I'll put railing in. Rail, add, <coughs> so that goes in as well. So from there, to there, and for new. Okay, so we're starting to get a bit of a drawing now. If I flick back to the 2D view, see what we've got. So zoom to extents. There we go. All right, so we've still got some uh, line work to pick up, some road line work. So I'm going to put in here WLA. Select, add, and I'm going to try, start picking up the white lining. So let's come in from over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pick up alternate segments, and the code has been set up in Enforce so that it draws alternate segments. You don't have to. Um, break any line work or anything like that. Enforce can do that itself. And I need to do the yellow lines as well, I believe. Yes, I do. So I put Y LA in there. Hit add. That becomes my current code. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, I'm not going to worry about getting this too perfect because I'm going to use a tool later on to help me straighten it up. So I just need to basically get the start and end of the dashes working. I need to now use solid white line. Add that. Not solid white line, sorry, solid yellow line. And we'll put that in as well. So starting in the same place as that finishes. And what we're doing is we're aiming for the center. I've obviously got a bit of a dodgy point there, haven't I? So I'm going to do. Let's go to Tools, Move Point, Move Point, and move that point 
to there. Good. Let's check it out in 2D. Okay, so I must have missed out a dash there, so I'll sort that out in a second. Um, what I'm going to do first though is straighten all this up. So I'm going to go to design and then we're going to go to align between. And basically I'm going to just go between there. I suppose I could just do it all, but that's just to show you that you can straighten it all up nice and neatly. I've missed that dash there. I'll fill it in just two seconds. Um, so, so I can actually see um, uh, what I've missed and try and interpolate data um, that, I may, that I may need to. I'm going to also create a image from the point cloud. So to do that, I'm going to first turn off my models because otherwise they'll be in the image. And I'm also going to turn off the model data. So I'm basically just left with the point cloud. And I'm also going to remove the top of the data because otherwise that'll get in the image as well. So obviously it's quite a slim site, so it's quite a flat site, so I can get away with it this way. The other way of doing it would be to use the grouping tool and essentially group it from the side. So I could just basically turn everything off <coughs> from the side, but this is uh, gonna be uh, an easy way of doing it just for now. So we'll uh, undo that. And now I'm just gonna go to tools, export image. So. Here we can actually choose the resolution of the image. So 4K, 4,000 pixels basically. So if it was four meters long, it'd be one pixel per millimeter. If it was eight meters long, it'd be one pixel per two millimeters. We've obviously got quite a large site here. And if I go to the camera, cancel that tool, sorry. If I go to 2D first, turn on the scale bar, because then that will give me an idea of how uh, big an image to create. So if I then go to tools, export image, Okay, so that's 80 meters long. So if I was to do it, say, at uh, 10, 10K, it'd be sort of one point per eight mil. So let's go double that. So I'm just gonna custom, um, main view, and let's go for, say, 30,000, 30,000 pixels. Now I've got a decent GPU in here, so I'm gonna put that on ultra. Hit save, I'm going to call it crash scene. Topo, and be very careful to set it to an ECW because an ECW is a very, very efficient compressed file format and is much faster than a GeoTIFF. So hit save. Perfect. So if I go to my model, Oh, B for backcloth, click on images, move that over. There we have our image. If it was a, so shall we say not so dense scan, um, you may have to employ a little trick and that's to increase the point size of the pixels so that when you create the image, um, you can actually see more detail. Otherwise you can end up sort of seeing through the point cloud and you don't kind of see much detail. If I just minimize that here, you can see we've got plenty of detail. That's all looking fine. And here is the um, segment that I missed. So just to show you that I can uh, do this um, manually in here, I'm going to go points, insert, and it was uh, white line. And we are going to choose our code. So make it interpolate onto the point cloud. So we'll say model interpolate onto the point cloud, and it's gonna basically pick the lowest level within that search radius, that's a bit too much. Press OK, oh, so I'm put a point there, and a point there, okay. So there's my dash, now the problem is that that is separate to the original string. So under lines, I'm gonna come down to apex and select insert. Click this feature here. Be mindful to pick the, that side of the dash, otherwise it will try and set it into the wrong segment. And put that point in there, and I'm gonna hit recode. That does that. Obviously there's a, there's a node here I need to pick up. There you go. So now obviously I need to do the straightening tool again. A line between. There you go, that tightens that up. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add the bus stop text. Um, put the bus stops in. 
and uh, all that little detail such as that. So, and we'll zoom in to bus and stop. So the code for that is the code text. Okay, so if I hit select, add, that goes in. So I'm gonna set the text value to bus and I'm going to select the next point and the next point. So if I now look in the model view, you can see we have bus written there. So, so do the stop now. So set the text, stop, one, two, and three. Just check that. There we go. So if I untick the back off, there we go, bus stop. Don't forget these point markers can always be turned off. So you can tidy it up later on. They're just there just to show the points were stored. So I'm just going to re repeat that text for the other text on the, in the drawing. So that should take care of the bus stops. Which it does. <clears throat> now the bus stop text that is. Uh, now I'm going to digitize in and the bus stop itself. <clears throat> okay, so if I zoom in the bus stop, so the code I'm going to use for that is rect. So rect draws a rectangle and puts the text inside that we want to, that we've already pre-specified in the choice list, or we obviously can change later on. Have to digitize, put in the code rect for rectangle, select, <clears throat> and it's a bus stop. So in this case, we are actually selecting predefined text that can actually be all on one line. Before we were defining individual lines of text for bus and stop, but in this situation, I'm just going to put the whole word bus stop inside the rectangle. And what you do is you pick up the long edge first. So we'll go from there to there. And it's a point anywhere along the other side. So I'm going to pick there. That will go in. Okay, so that's in there now. Uh, do the same for the bin. Let's change it to bin. One, two, three. So we still need to do the lamppost. So I put LP in here, select. So to pick up the center of this here, I'm going to very quickly just go cylinder picker. Okay, and it's set to farthest at the moment. So let's go nearest. Okay, and it's obviously uh, the default radius is way too big. So let's go 0.2. So it knows what reference to look at. So here we go. Okay, and if I now go to sections and show you path, there you go. So there's our there's our value that's coming in from the section. We can override it if we want. We can move it up and down. Um, but I'm just going to go pick height so it comes from the ground and hit digitize. So that creates that one. You can see there it is at ground level. And I believe there's another lamppost here. There is. Back to digitize. Cylinder pickup. So there. Move it down if you need to. Find circle again once we're happy. And then pick height, ground level, digitize. And that's done. And then we can close the section view. So we've done the lampposts, we've done the bins, we've done the bus stops, we've done the text. We now need to start thinking about the, the detail uh, on site in terms of the crash investigation itself. So I'm going to switch to the code mark num, which essentially is exactly what it says in the tin. It's a numbered marker. Hit add. Okay. So we're going to tick required attributes so that it does not let us continue until the appropriate attribute until the appropriate attributes are filled. So I'm going to say number one, and comment is going to be body, and stick that there. That goes in just to say that it's been done. Okay, so the next one, number two, 
we could auto number if we needed to, uh, but I don't know whether things are picked up in order all the time. No comment. Yeah. Eleven. Okay, so that's those objects picked up. If I flip back to here and turn off the image, there you can see all of the numbered items. Turn that off, there we go. Properly filled. Uh, now I need to pick up the vehicle, the vehicle extents. So back in the point cloud engine, I'm just gonna finally uh, finish by picking up the extents of the car. Put in the code, we'll assume it's a hatch backup for the time being. Hit enter, select. Okay, so we're just going to go back to front and size it. Right, so we've got pretty much everything we need, I think, in here for the time being. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a drawing. Or a layout. So I can close the 3D view and create a, a layout now to plot all this information on a sheet and fill in the appropriate information. So I get layouts, two points so that I can orientate it, choose the appropriate um, layout. Uh, so I want to do 50 and I want to auto fill the values. Okay. So if I go one point there, one point there to roughly position it, I'll call this one layout one. Okay, now it's asking us for information pertinent to that particular drawing because it's been set up with fields that need to be auto filled. So I'll say the collision date is today. So say 14th of May, 2021, some numbers. I'll go to the next. Surveyed by me, and I will leave the item ref blank so we can fill it in later if we need to. Press OK, it will warn me. Now that's obviously not quite lined up, <clears throat> so I'm going to just go to move, click that, and do that. There we go. Get back to project manager, and here's our layout. Okay, so just for the time being, because it's a bit overpowering, I'm just going to right click and just turn off the image. So I'm going to come down to settings and move the image over. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is put a north arrow on this. So I'm going to right click, north arrow. This one's been predefined, ready for us. So I'm just going to say OK. Put the north arrow there. I'm also going to put on a scale bar. Choose a small one. I'm going to annotate every value. Put that down there. Okay. And I'm going to put now a table down that represents uh, what these items here are in the in the fields. So to do that, I go to Tools, Points Prefix. It says what code. Let's mark num. Press OK. Now I need to load the correct one which we have there we've got mark a number and the comment press ok and put that down say there Can turn the image back on now And obviously when I go to print, that will change to black. I'm just going to move that table. It's probably in the wrong place. I'll hit move, hit the table, and we'll just position it there. And if I now zoom to extents, uh, I don't want to see the markers though. So I'm going to flip back to the model. So I'll turn the points off. The drawing will update automatically. And then to see how the print looks, so I can just go print setup. Choose PDF printer driver, A3, OK. 
preview. As I said, anything that was white was being obviously changed to black for print. And it's good to go.